In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how to create a countdown timer, add a pause continue toggle, and display the time in minutes and seconds. I'm going to start a new scene here. I am picking a 2D scene, but this works with 3D all the same. If you look at my projects panel, you'll see that I already have a fonts and scripts folder in there. Um, this is from a previous tutorial. Don't worry about them. We will be creating a new C Sharp script in the scripts folder. So if you don't have one, go ahead and create that folder if you want to. Let's go ahead and add a UI text object to the scene. This will be used to display our countdown time. I'm going to name it countdown timer. Next, let's right click the scripts folder and choose C Sharp scripts. Let's name it countdown timer script. Let's double click on it and have Visual Studio pop up. I'm going to start the script by adding a public time remaining field here. This will be the variable that will hold the start time and we will be subtracting a tiny amount of time per frame out of this variable. In the update method here, I want to make sure that time remaining is still has a value that is greater than zero in it before I reduce that tiny amount of time out of that variable. Um, you can also see that IntelliSense, I have Copilot installed, so Copilot is trying to guess what I'm trying to do and I am avoid, I'm, I'm avoiding trying to use it uh, during this tutorial, but uh, there it is. So on line 20, if the time remaining is greater than 20, then let's go ahead and just take the delta time out of the tiny re of the time remaining. Next, let's add a private field here. So we have a reference to our UI text object. And we need to make sure that we get a reference to that component in the start method of this script. Well, very cool. Now that we have a reference to that text mesh UI component, we can go ahead right, uh, right after um, taking that little, little bit of time out of the time remaining variable, we can go ahead and display that in the uh, text. We are going to round that, uh, that amount so then uh, we don't have any uh, decimals. Next, let's go back to Unity. Make sure that we drag and drop that countdown timer script onto the countdown timer text element and let's run it. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, our time remaining is going down and we're displaying when it updates. Going back to Visual Studio here, let's make one tiny update Instead of using the debug.log when we run out of time, let's go ahead and then display that in the countdown timer. Let's see what that looks like. Repositioning here, the X and Y, make sure it's centered. Um, increasing the font size to 50. Alignment. And let's play. Okay, well, that's clearly working, but let's see what happens if we change here from 10 seconds to 120 seconds or two minutes. Again, as we can see, that is working properly, but that's not really desirable. We don't want our countdown to always display seconds. We need, that, we need it to display minutes and seconds. Let's address that shortly. First, let's go ahead and create a pause continual toggle here so then we can start and and pause we can start and pause the timer depending on the value of that boolean i named this variable pause continue which is not a very good name i will change later but for now let's just stick with it so we declare a public boolean call pause continue we set the initial value to false we're going to surround that entire logic there with the Boolean. 
meaning that if that Boolean is true, then we're going to execute the logic inside those brackets, inside those curly uh, braces. But if it's false, then we're just going to skip right over it. I'm also copying the uh, countdown timer into the um, start method here, and I'm going to display the the time remaining, the the, the starting value of time remaining in the, um, in the timer. So right now there's nothing there, but then when we start, it will it will get that value in there. And then as soon as we toggle that pause continue variable, then the timer will actually start working. Now uh, let's go back to Visual Studio and address that uh, variable name. Like I said, uh, pause continue is not a very good name. Let's change it to run timer. Seems more appropriate. So if run timer, let's run the timer. And if it's false, let's skip right over it. Okay, so we're finally back on that problem about displaying minutes and seconds. Let's go ahead and create a couple of um, uh, variables in here. One will be the minutes and the other one will be the seconds. We're going to split that time remaining into minutes and seconds by getting the amount of time remaining divided by 60. That will be our number of minutes. And if we use the uh, remainder operator here, we can get the number of seconds. So time remaining remainder 60 we'll get the number of seconds. Now we need to format our time to display those uh, minutes and seconds properly. There are a few different ways to do this. I am gonna use a, a string interpolation here. So basically you just use the dollar sign, uh, double quotes. Then I'm gonna drop in the variable between curly braces, colon, and the seconds. That way I can have those two values in the string. So let's go ahead and run the app, see what it looks like. The app's still displaying 120 here because we have to change that start method. But when we hit the update method, it looks like it's displaying things properly. So let's go back to Visual Studio and let's address that. We have to change that start method. And since we need to do this in two different places, let's go ahead and introduce a common function here. So we're not, uh, we're, we're no longer duplicating code. So I'm using a shortcut for Visual Studio here. It's control period allows me to extract a uh, piece of code into a function. Um, I mistyped here the name. It's supposed to be display time left, but I'll, I'll, I'll fix that later on. For now, we have the function display time left. I'm also moving that logic from within the update method into the display time left function. And then I get to call the function in the start method as well. I'm gonna use another shortcut here for um, Visual Studio. It's a control RR that lets you rename a function or actually anything, function or variable and then it renames everywhere for you. So very, very useful shortcut. There it is. Now it just looks funny, right? We need to format that properly. So that's supposed to display two minutes because 120 seconds, but two, two colon zero looks uh, very funny. So we need to address that. Um, th there are different ways of doing this. Uh, we can use a string format here. We can also use um, pad left. I went with pad left. I have to say this is not the best looking code, but it does get the job done. Let's go ahead and run it again, see what it looks like. There it is, that looks much better. So now we can go ahead and start running the timer and that looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, run some tests here on the fly. 
So let's change the time remaining to 64 seconds, see what that looks like. Seems to behave properly. We have zero, zero column and the number of seconds remaining. Let's go ahead and change it to three seconds. That looks good as well. Let's make some small adjustments here. I just wanted to look a little more visual pleasing. So increasing the size of the text box, just writing some text in here just to test before I run the program again. Looks like good size, remove the text. There you go. Let's run those tests again. Sixty three seconds and perfect. Looks good. Here's just a final quick view of the entire program. All right, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.